Welcome to PC Gaming 101. I'm Bo Moore. And I'm Jared Walton. And today we're going to show you how to build a gaming PC. Now the first step you need when building a gaming PC is you got to pick out all your parts. So you're going to need a case. We've chosen NZXT's H440. You also need a power supply. We like to use the 80 plus gold certified power supplies because they're more efficient and we also like to go with modular cables so that you don't have a bunch of extra cable clutter inside your case. Then you need to choose a CPU and a motherboard. Those are kind of a pair so you got to choose those together because your CPU dictates what motherboards you can use and vice versa because you can't put an AMD CPU in an Intel motherboard or things like that. You're also going to need some memory. These days most PCs are using DDR4 and we've gone with G-Skills Trident Z RGB memory. It's clocked at 3200 megahertz and it looks great and performs well. And of course you need a graphics card since this is a gaming PC. We're using MSI's GeForce GTX 1080 Gaming X. You also need storage for your build. We like to have a nice fast SSD for our operating system as well as a larger capacity, usually an SSD but you can also use a traditional hard drive for your games and programs and everything like that. And finally, you need everything outside of the PC, your peripherals. We've got a Razer mouse and keyboard and a nice Acer Predator monitor. And of course, you'll need to make sure that all of the parts that you choose are compatible with each other. You can go to a site like PC Park Picker and use their compatibility filter, or you can go to any of our build guides here at PC Gamer, and we make sure that everything works well together. Today, we are going to be building a PC that's similar to our high-end build. So let's walk through what's inside a case. First thing, most cases come with a couple of case fans pre-installed. Ours has one in the back and three in the front. You can also install additional case fans, but that's not really necessary unless your case doesn't have many pre-installed or if you really want extra airflow in a particularly powerful build. Inside you can see the motherboard tray as well as a couple of SSD slots. On the back, the main thing to see are the drive bays. This is where you can put additional SSDs or you could put hard drives in there or basically anything else you might need. And then you've also got a fan and LED controller that NZXD includes for the lighting and, and case fans. Otherwise, you've got your power supply in the bottom that's accessed through the back. All it is now is installing the parts and getting everything wired up. Let's install our CPU into the motherboard. Now, before we get started, Jared, is there anything that I need to know about best practices of how to handle my components? And I've heard about anti-static bands. So, I hate to say this, but I never use anti-static bands and I've never actually zapped a, an electronics component. You hear horror stories. If it happens to you, it's terrible, but you know, I've been doing this for 30 years and it's never happened to me, so I'm not too worried about anti-static bands and that sort of thing. One thing to point out is that your motherboard and some of your other components will come in an anti-static bag. That anti-static bag keeps the static outside of the bag. So once you pull your motherboard out, you don't actually want to put it on top of the anti-static bag. You're better off just setting it on top of the motherboard box. I like to install the CPU into the motherboard before we put it in the case. It's just easier, it's lying flat. So it's all better to start with easy access to your motherboard. Now there's a clip you gotta pop off on the CPU slot. That exposes all the pins. And then with socket 1151, there's just one lever that you pull back and then it's time to install your CPU. Your CPU has notches that show which way it goes in. Those will line up with notches on the CPU socket, so you can't really put it in wrong. It just slides in, put that down, close the latch, and we're done. So since we're going with a high-end build and we have a pretty fast NVMe SSD for our operating system, let's go ahead and install that now while we have the motherboard out and easy to install. So we've got two M.2 slots. Let's put them both to use. First thing you do is you take off the M.2 shield if your motherboard has one. We don't really find they're necessary, so I'm just gonna leave it out. So installing the drive is pretty easy. You just pop it into the slot, slide it down, and install the screw back in. You'll notice that the second M.2 slot doesn't even have a shield, so some older M.2 drives tended to run a little hot, and that's why some motherboard makers include the shield. I don't find they're super necessary. The reason we go with an M.2 drive for our operating system is because NVMe SSDs they're just really, really fast, and we want our operating system to load as fast as possible. Let's talk about power supplies. Jared, when's the best time for me to install the power supply into my case? So, it really depends on your case. On this case, we actually have some nice features that make it easy to install right at the beginning. So we've got the fully modular power supply, there's no cables to get in the way, and we've got a mounting bracket on the back of the case that we simply take off. Once that's off, we put that on the power supply and just slide the power supply back in and we can add the cables whenever we need to. All right, so let's install the motherboard. First thing you wanna do is take your IO panel cover and pop it in here to the back of your case. All you have to do is literally just put the motherboard in. Of course, align the panel 
cover with the motherboard. So of the nine screws in the motherboard, the center one here is just for alignment. Three screws at the top, two in the middle, and then another three at the bottom. So now that we've installed our motherboard into the case, now's a good time to go ahead and plug in all of our case fans and other cables and things like that. That's right. And the NZXT case came pre-wired with its fans, so we don't have to worry about that part. But what we do have to worry about is wiring up like your power switches, reset switches, USB ports, and audio ports. So I'm gonna do that now. You can route these wires through the bottom of the case, and you can see the audio panel connector just goes here on the left side. So your front panel connectors are actually the most tricky part of any motherboard wiring in my opinion. You need to make sure to get the plus and minus things connected correctly and to the right pins and there's five cables to connect, all very small. You'll want to consult your motherboard manual to know which pins are positive and which are ground. Know that for your case connectors, the triangle marks your positive connections or if you have white and colored cables, the colored wires are your positive connections. Then we'll move over. This is a USB 2 connector for the front of the case. And so those are keyed so that they can only go in one way. You just plug that in. And then finally, we move up to the USB 3 cable. These have more pins in order to cope with the higher signaling rates of USB 3. But if you wiggle it in there, you can snap that on and your case is now all wired up. So now that our motherboard is in place and everything's plugged in, it's time to install our CPU cooler. And to do that, on this case, we actually need to pop off the top. Now something else you'll see here, if you look closely, is your power connector for your CPU power, your EPS 12 volt. It's gonna be blocked by our cooler, so we also wanna get that wired before we put the cooler in. What I like to do is, when you're installing with a big radiator like this, I like to install the fans to the radiator before we actually install it into the case. That's right. Now one of the things you're going to hear about if you start researching on the internet is should you have your fans be intake fans for your all-in-one cooler or should they be exhaust fans pushing up through the radiator? What I've discovered over the years is that it's almost always better to have positive pressure with air flowing into the case. So even though we've got three case fans in the front of this case blowing in and only one exhausting, we're going to have these two extra fans blow down and that way any filtering will come through the fans and you won't get a bunch of dust around the corners and the cooling will still be great. There are a lot of screws to put together on, a, on these all-in-one coolers. You've got four for each fan, so that's eight screws plus four more to mount the radiator to the case. And once it's all together, you'll be ready to mount the actual water block onto the CPU. Now that our CPU cooler fans are secured to the CPU cooler, we're gonna install it into the case. Now, we've got our cables here, so we're going to feed these through the back of the case and they'll come back in later and attach to the motherboard. So let's go ahead and get that in the right position. Once that's in place, we just need to screw in the eight more tiny screws into the radiator and then we can put the top back onto the case. So let's install our water block onto the motherboard. So the first thing we're going to have to do is put the appropriate mounting bracket on the back of the motherboard and put the screws through the front of the motherboard that will then hold the water block in place. Once that's done, then we can actually get the water block, put that over the top of the screws and use these thumb bolts to hold it all on. Now when you're installing the water block onto the CPU, you wanna go alternate from one corner to the other and then the two corners again, kind of tightening everything a little bit, little by little, so that you don't put too much pressure on one corner at a time. Something else to note is that this NZXT Kraken X62 has pre-applied thermal paste on it, but if you wanted to use your own thermal paste, you should make sure to remove any existing thermal paste first and then put the thermal paste on the CPU. So to power the water block, we of course need a power cable and to string the cables coming from it to hook up to our CPU fans. In this case, NZXT also includes a USB connector on their water block, and that's to allow software control of the fans and other monitoring elements for their water block. So we need to plug that in as well as the fans. And then on the back of the motherboard tray, we'll have a SATA connector that powers up the water block, the pump and the fans. So as we're plugging everything in, now we could just kind of let it all run willy nilly in the front of the case, but it's much better, generally just good PC building to pull everything to the back and keep it nice and tidy. That improves airflow and keeps dust out of the way and it just makes everything look better. Now let's install our RAM. 
You know, honestly, memory is about the easiest thing to install, but you still can do it wrong. Now, when you're slotting your RAM into the motherboard, there's a little notch that you should look for, and that notch will line up with a little point in the motherboard so that you know that you're slotting it in the correct direction. As you push the memory down into the slots, you'll see these clips on the side will pop in and hold the memory in place. Most modern motherboards, you're going to have a one slot separation between the two sticks. So you'll have one stick in slot two and one stick in slot four. Those are the slots that are further away from the CPU. If you're using four sticks of RAM, you'd obviously fill all four slots. Now to the fun part, let's install our GPU. So Jared, which PCA slot should I put my graphics card into? In almost all cases, you're gonna to wanna to use the top slot, the one closest to your CPU. So look at where that lines up with the back of your case and then remove the appropriate covers. Nearly all graphics cards these days will occupy two of the slot covers. So pull those out, slot your GPU into the PCI Express slot, and then put the screws in and you're done. All you need to do after that is connect the PCI Express power connectors. If you're installing a SATA hard drive or SATA SSD, the process is the same. In this case, we have a little mounting bracket. It's easiest to take off, screw the SSD into the mounting bracket, plug everything in, and then screw it back into the case. We've got everything connected except the parts that plug into the modular power supply. They're all labeled, so it's not too hard, but depending on your case and your power supply, you might want to try and do this with the power supply slid out from the case first and then just push it back in. All right, we're all done with the build. Let's fire it up, Bo. Now this is the first boot, so we are going to want to enter the BIOS and get some things configured, make sure everything is set up properly, and then we can install the operating system. Now the only thing we really need to do right now is to enable XMP. Hey, there. And you could set your boot drive. You could also overclock your CPU, but that's a story for another day.